Hey everyone, and welcome back. Uh, this is gonna be the first episode in a new series where we focus on building infrastructure with Terraform on AWS. For today's session, it's gonna be an introduction to Terraform and how to use it to provision infrastructure, and also just a quick overview of what infrastructure as code is. Um, I've played with Terraform for a couple of years and I really enjoy it, so I thought I'd do this video series to help others get started with it. So, getting into what it is. Firstly, what is infrastructure as code? Well, this is where you treat your infrastructure the same way you do your code. So you first commit it somewhere, someone has a look at that code to make sure that it does what it's supposed to. Um, there's automated tests running, and then ultimately, once everybody is happy with the code, it gets merged into your main branch, and that then rolls out automatically using some kind of CI CD pipeline. You want to do the same with the infrastructure. So we will go ahead and define some infrastructure, an Amazon EC2 instance inside a plain text file. Uh, we'll then uh, commit this file and then uh, there will be some automated tests and someone reviewing this before it automatically rolls out. That is the end goal. So for today, I'm going to be showing you how to do this with Terraform uh, using an AWS Cloud9 environment. So let's jump into the console so I can show you exactly how to do all of this. Okay, so now we have got our IDE up and running. Um, and the first thing we have to do is we have to install Terraform. To do that, we head over to terraform.io and there is a download section and then you need to pick the architecture um, and uh, specific to your operating system that you are running. So in our case, we, because we're running on an EC2 instance with Cloud9, we are running on Linux 64-bit. So let's quickly grab the link over there and we just go back to our instance and what we'll do now is to just download the file using wget and unzip it once we've downloaded it. Now what we can do is we can actually run Terraform locally um, because the binary is here. So it's already flagged as executable, so we don't have to make that change. Now this is nice, but this doesn't mean that we can actually use it inside our project directory. So let's move the binary into a folder um, that is on our path. Now you can um, grab the file like that saying uh, mb uh, Terraform, and we're going to move it to this folder uh, usr slash uh, bin, uh, because that's where a bunch of other bin files live, and I like putting my binaries there. And we have to prefix our command with sudo because that directory um, user bin is owned by root, which means we can't actually copy files there unless we um, perform the operation as root. So let's go ahead and do that. Now what I can do is in any directory, I can just run Terraform directly like this and I'm able to access the binary. So we are good to go, except we need a directory to put our source file in. Um, so let's go, or source files. Let's quickly go ahead and create one and we can call it uh, TF uh, AWS start. And we are going to just change into it quickly. Cool. So now that we've got our Terraform um, folder for um, working with, we need to understand how Terraform reads the files and what files it actually uses for project structure. Now, there is a Terraform init command, which we'll get to in a minute, but you don't have to have any files in a folder to actually use uh, Terraform in that folder or initialize a specific set of files um, to get the project going. All you need to do is create one file with a .tf extension. So let's quickly, create a file called uh, example.tf uh, and we can open it up. And this is going to be, a, uh, sorry, this one, a plain tf, um, a plain text file. Now, the quickest way to get started is grab a sample from the HashiCorp website. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna look for uh, Terraform AWS EC2 um, instance. Um, and what we'll do is open up that link. So you can see in the documentation, um, this is um, under AWS latest uh, and it's a resource and we're looking for the instance. And this resource is called an AWS resource type. So let's grab this and I will take you through all of the code in here step by step to explain what it is. So let's paste that in there. Okay, so firstly, a provider. In Terraform, a provider is a infrastructure um, service that it interacts with. So in this case, the provider is AWS, but it can be something like um, Chef or it can be something like a Kubernetes cluster. Uh, Terraform can interact with a whole variety of um, providers. And the last time I had a look, it was more than 200 different providers. So super useful to create all of your infrastructure using Terraform. But for our use case, we wanna use AWS. And this provider block that you see over here is how you configure it to um, interact with AWS. So the first thing we do over here is that we wanna change the region from uh, US West 2 to EU West 1, which is Ireland, which is the um, region that I do my um, demos in usually. So what you'll also see here is that there are no credentials configured. The reason for this is that I'm making use of a Cloud9 environment, which is um, running on an EC2 instance. 
that EC2 instance has an IAM role attached to it, which means when I perform actions against the AWS CLI, um, there are temporary credentials that are rotated every 15 minutes for me that I don't have to manage or touch. So you shouldn't be putting any credentials in this block ever. The reason is you might accidentally commit that file and then others can get those credentials. And if you do it in a public repository, that is usually automated. So you'll know within seconds that somebody is actually starting to abuse your account. So when you look at the code of here, what you'll see is that in Terraform, you always start off with some kind of block to define what you're dealing with. So we start off with a provider. Now the next block over here starts with a keyword data. And in Terraform, that is a data source. Now a data source is a mechanism to look up data against your infrastructure provider that you're busy working with. And what we're doing in this case is we're, we're telling it that we are doing a data source lookup of type AWS AMI, so Amazon Machine Image. These are the images that you use to actually provision your infrastructure, um, or specifically a, a virtual machine. And you give it some kind of variable or friendly name, in this case, Ubuntu. Uh, what we can do is you can re rename this to anything. So let's say, for example, we change this to a uh, cloud corpus like that. I'll show you how we reference it later. Then what this specific data block does is that it has got uh, sp uh, specific parameters in terms of how to do the lookup. So the first one over here is the most recent flag, where we say grab the most recent um, AWS AMI. Now, there will be a list of AMIs when we start searching specifically for, for Ubuntu. And what we do there is that we would just want to grab the most recent one based on date. Then we start setting some filters. This helps us to narrow down the image that we are looking for. Because as you can imagine, there are hundreds and thousands of AMIs available on AWS. So the first filter we add is look for a name that matches the following string um, and has a, a wildcard at its end. Now, I'm happy to say that this um, string, the documentation has been updated because this used to point to a 14.04 .04 version of Ubuntu. So this 20.04 uh, is a nice fresh version of Ubuntu. So we don't have to modify that again. Then next, what we do is the next filter we apply is the virtualization type. Now on AWS, there are a couple of different types you can use for virtualization, but the most common one at the moment that you should be using is HVM. So we filter by that. Then lastly, what we do is we filter using the keyword owners and we specify a specific account ID. Now this account ID belongs to Canonical, who is the company that actually provides Ubuntu. The reason we provide this account ID is that any AWS account can actually publish an AMI. So you can actually use an AMI from every any account that has published it publicly, um, but you're not always sure who the person is that pub is publishing that AMI. So always make sure that you grab an image from a reputable source. For example, the people who actually build Ubuntu. Um, so what we're doing in this case is we're searching their account for HVM virtualized um, Ubuntu images using that string. So it'll get us the most latest image that they've built of Ubuntu that we can use on AWS in our region. Now, the last block that we have over here is where we are actually spinning up the actual instance that we're dealing with. What you can see here is that this block is started off with a resource keyword. And this tells us we're building a resource, which is the actual infrastructure um, unit that we're dealing with. We're telling it that it is an AWS instance type that we're dealing with, and we're giving it a um, variable name called web at the moment. So let's just call this sample just to change and make it a little bit interesting. Now, what you can see over here is that I have to specify the AMI, which is an, um, that a machine ID or uh, Amazon machine image um, ID that I'm using to spin up the virtual machine. Now, when I um, made the change over here in this data block, I renamed it to Cloud Quibus. Um, and what I have to do down here to be able to reference is, is that I say that I'm dealing with a data lookup type uh, or data source, which is data. And then I say it's an AWS AMI type, and then I actually give it the name. So it's no longer called Ubuntu, it's now called Cloud Quibus. And you put that in there, and then I read the attribute of it. And if you're interested to know what these attributes are that are available, what you can do is you can do Terraform search for um, AWS AMI and then a data source like this. And then when you open up um, the documentation, and you can see in the URL that we're now looking at a data source over here, where previously that says said a resource uh, for the instance. Now in AMI, what you can see is this is the sample that they have to do the lookup, but you can look down here at the details of the um, parameters you can set to do your lookup. And then lastly, and more importantly, is here, you can get the list of properties of this lookup that was done. So firstly, it gets you the ID of the AMI um, in terms of um, the value. Then it also gets you all of these configuration values that you can now reference uh, from the object. And with a lot of different resources, these values will change. So this is super useful. For example, let's say you need to get um, a specific um, path on a application load balancer. 
you can use the application load balancer um, data source object to actually get a specific application load base balancer based on filter criteria. And then you would go and read the properties of it. So in our case, what we want is we only want the ID of that AMI since we need to specify it. Then what we need to do is we need to specify the type um, of instance we want to launch. And this is the size of your instance. So we're looking at a T3 micro in this case, which is a fairly small instance, um, but it'll serve for our purposes. And then lastly, what we're doing is we're defining the tags for this instance, and we're creating a name tag called hello world. Um, so let's just um, stick with that and let me show you how we create the infrastructure. So now what we need to do is we need to go ahead and initialize our Terraform um, um, project. So we go Terraform in it. And what you'll see is that it does create a hidden folder, uh, a .terraform folder, but it doesn't actually create any additional files or scaffolding because uh, it doesn't need those. And now what we can do is we can go ahead and say Terraform plan. And this will allow um, us to see what are the infrastructure changes that Terraform actually wants to apply. And if I took a, take a look here at the bottom, let me just make that a bit bigger. Um, what we can see is um, it'll tell us at the top that it wants to do a create action with a green plus, and then it'll tell us what does it want to create. And in this case, it says it wants to create a resource of AWS instance type, and we're calling it sample, and it has got a very specific uh, MI ID, and that's the one that it found from the lookup. And then it's got a whole bunch of properties that it will only know after it actually does the apply, which is after the instance has been created. For example, the ARN, which is the Amazon resource name. And this is allocated when you create resources. So you cannot know that upfront. So there's a whole bunch of values over here that it doesn't yet know and can only be known after we go and create our infrastructure. So then the last part that you wanna pay attention to is this line, which says plan one to add, zero to change, and zero to destroy. Terraform, when you run the plan command, always give you an overview of, or summary of what it wants to do. And in this case, we can see only one to add, so let's go ahead and do that. But if you see something like one to destroy or uh, one to change and one to destroy, always take a careful look at your plan output to see what is going to change. So now all we do is if we want to make, uh, create this, we say Terraform apply. And while this is running, I'm gonna quickly jump to the AWS console over here that I have open for EC2 instances. Now you can see I've got a couple here which are other um, uh, Cloud9 instances, and the one that we're currently running on is this specific one. But if I refresh this, what I can see is that um, there will be, a, uh, let's just quickly double check. Oh, I need to say yes. That's why it hasn't done that yet. So when you run apply, it'll ask you, it'll show you the output of what it wants to apply, and then ask you, do you want to apply this? And in our case, we're gonna say yes. So now if we go back to our EC2 console and we say refresh over here, what we'll see is that there is a new instance that's currently spinning up. It's a T2 micro. And if we look at the AMI ID down here in the properties, it'll match what we saw earlier in the output um, inside the console. So while this is spinning up, let's go back to the console quickly. So it actually was able to spin that instance up in 12 seconds. Now granted, it's still busy provisioning on this side. If I refresh this, um, it's still in the initialization phase where it's busy setting up all the um, necessary components while it's starting up. So now let's say we want to go change our infrastructure and we go back to our file definition over here. And instead of, uh, let me just make the bigger, there we go. Instead of just calling the instance hello world, we'll make it a little bit more exciting. So let's add some rocket emojis to it. And we're gonna call it uh, hello Terraform uh, on AWS like that. Now what we can do is if we clean this up, um, we can run Terraform um, plan again. Uh, like that. And what it will do is it will give us the output of what it wants to change for our infrastructure. Now, because it created the, inf the instance that we are dealing with and it knows about it, it will give us a plan output saying it doesn't want to add anything. It wants to change one part and it also wants to destroy nothing in this case. So let's quickly look at the output here to see what it is we want to change. We're going to scroll all the way to the top. Now what we can see is instead of that green plus that says create, it says with a yellow tilde, update in place. Now the update and the in place portion is important because that means that it is able to modify the existing resource. You might sometimes see a plus slash minus um, with in red that says um, update with a, a replace or recreate. It'll be a very explicit warning that tells you that it needs to recreate this resource, so completely destroy it. In the case of a database, that's probably not a good thing. So always pay attention if you see anything in red over here. So what we can see over here is that it wants to modify this specific resource that we're dealing with over here, that instance that we have. And if I scroll down, you can see that there's nothing on the left here indicating which part is going to change until I get to tags. 
Now in the tag section, what we can see that is it wants to change the name from to Hello World, or sorry, from Hello World, and it wants to change it to that uh, three emoji rockets, Hello Terraform on AWS. So you can see exactly what infrastructure it is that you want to change. You can also see over here all the configuration values that are now present for this specific instance because Terraform can now actually populate the values because they exist. The instance has been created, so it's got an instance ID. Uh, if we scroll up a little bit, it will have an ARN um, as well, which is the Amazon resource name, etc. So it has all of these properties and you can now reference them. So now what we can do is we could use the same Terraform apply as previously, but I want to show you a better way to do this. So what we would do is we run the same Terraform plan command, except we use the flag for out. We say output to a file called plan.out, please. And let's run it again. So what will happen now is it'll do the exact same steps as before with regard to the planning. It'll still output the planning for us, but now what we can see is there's a plan.out file, plan file over here, and you can call it whatever you want the file itself. What this allows us to do is that we can now take this plan that we saw in front of us and actually pass that to the apply command which means that when we get to our CICD process, once we've run plan and we save that file, we know that when we get to the stage of making changes to our infrastructure, it'll be the exact changes that we review. Um, and to do that, all we say is we say Terraform apply and we give it the file name, which is planned that out. Now, in this instance, what will happen is that apply won't ask us for um, confirmation of the change. And as you can see, this change was a fairly quick one because the instance already existed and it was probably only a single API call. So if I refresh this instance, we can see now that the name has been updated to those rocket emojis and hello Terraform, Terraform on AWS. So that is how you can do um, and manage it better. Now the interesting part with uh, apply as well is, let's say I accidentally want to run this again. Let's take a look at what happens because it'll error. So what you see over here is that the save plan is stale. Terraform, when it generates a plan, it also keeps track of what state the infrastructure was in when it started that with regard to the state file version. And if you try and apply a plan uh, on, a, on a state file or a state of your infrastructure that wasn't the starting point of that plan, it'll actually error like this, which is a very useful safety mechanism. Because this tells you that the infrastructure has changed since you ran plan, and now when you want to run apply, it might not work the way you need to. So you need to rerun um, uh, plan first to know what is going on. So what we're going to uh, do now is we're going to tear down our infrastructure. And how we do that is we can use the Terraform command um, destroy. And it's as simple as this. And what this will do is it'll actually use the state file to tell us what infrastructure is it going to delete. And what we can see over here when we scroll up is that we now have a, a, a red minus with destroy. And you can see this specific AWS instance sample will be destroyed. And over here, you can see all the properties that are going to be to, um, uh, change from their values to null values because they're going to be deleted. Um, and if we scroll right to the bottom, once again, the plan will give us a summary. Um, and it says that it will destroy one object um, and or one resource, and then it'll um, change none and add none. So we're going to go ahead and say yes. And as soon as we do that, we can hop back to our um, EC2 console. And if I refresh this now, we can immediately see that this instance is in the process of shutting down now. So this means that we are now deleting that infrastructure that we just created. So if we wait over here, it normally takes about uh, 30 to 40 seconds to actually delete an instance. We'll see that it actually completes and then our infrastructure is gone again. So this is one of the other benefits of do managing your infrastructure as code, where if you change infrastructure or if you need to delete infrastructure, you simply remove it from the definition of what you want created and Terraform will actually take care of deleting that for you. Um, and it's an easy way to keep your accounts nice and clean and not have infrastructure running that you no longer need. So that's it for today. In the next session, I'm going to show you a little bit more about how the Terraform state file works and how you should keep it safe. So thanks for joining us for this session. If you enjoyed it and thought it was useful, please hit the subscribe button and like button. That'll help people to be able to find this video and learn as well. And also, when I release some more videos in the near future, you'll get a notification about um, them as they come out. Um, I hope to see you in one of the future videos. And as always, please hit me up in the comments with feedback or um, recommendations of what you want me to cover. Or if there's anything in this video that um, was incorrect, please help me out. Um, I hope to see you in a future one. Bye.